Hello my dear friends, I hope you all are doing good. This is Prashant Mamani and I warmly welcome all of you to Study IQ. Identify the place that you can see on your screen. Give me the name of this place. Uh, uh, let me know where do you find this place and also let me know with whom this place is associated with. With this dear friends, uh, do you know that Study IQ provides you with different pen drive and tablet courses for different exams. So want to know more about it? Check out studyiq.com. If you have any question queries, you have chat support available on our portal as well as you have this numbers on your screen on which you can give us a call. With this, dear friends, uh, first of all, let me wish all of you a very, very, very happy Eid Mubarak. Uh, it is uh, Milad Ul Un Nabi tomorrow, and President has uh, wished. Uh, all Muslim brothers and sisters in India and abroad. And of course, uh, on this occasion, I would like to wish Eid Mubarak to all my dear friends, right, uh, all around the world. Uh, the other thing is that, uh, let me share a couple of things that I know about uh, Milad Ud Nabi. Uh, basically, it is a birthday of uh, uh, the Holy Prophet Muhammad. And uh, dear friends, uh, so far what I know about uh, Prophet Muhammad is that uh, all the things uh, that he has said, done, everything he has done, right, uh, everything is uh, been done by his heart, right. Uh, he was a, a, a prophet, was, uh, you can say, a rarest of the rare uh, person who has ever walked on this earth. And this is one of the main reasons, because he has done everything uh, with his heart, right. Uh, it is believed that uh, uh, Prophet was as innocent as a small child. And uh, uh, there are other gems, you can say, right? Other Prophets uh, uh, we know is uh, Guru Nanak is there, Krishna, uh, then of course, certainly uh, Prophet Muhammad and Jesus. Uh, these are the rarest of the rare flowers uh, that we have seen on the Garden of Earth. With this, dear friends, uh, the picture that you can see on your screen, I'm sure many of you might have identified it. It is pertaining to Hornbill Festival, which is celebrated in Nagaland. Now, if you are watching or if, if you have came across this thing, if you watch uh, DD News or uh, Rajya Sabha Television or Lok Sabha Television, then you find advertisement on tourism right uh, different states and uh, you have a one advertisement that is uh, clubbing all this northeastern states together and uh, i have seen this one in that advertisement as well uh, with this dear friends uh, this hornbill festival is celebrated with this uh, state formation day of nagaland and uh, this is a very happy moment for all of us because uh, Nagaland was known or infamous for insurgency, but now uh, there is a uh, there is a sort of environment of optimism as well as uh, hope, and hopefully in near future everything will be sorted out. With this, uh, this festival marks or it indicates or showcases uh, the rich Naga culture and traditions and uh, preserved, which is preserved for over many many years, and it celebrates this music, dance, and food as you can see on your screen the dance is quite celebrated dance and music and food as well uh, with this dear friends uh, it also indicates the diversity of naga society and this is one of the main reason why the final agreement uh, regarding this uh, you can say peace process is not signed yet because uh, government was uh, in discussion with uh, one group i would not like to name that group here but we have discussed about the, uh, this thing earlier as well. Because, but this is not an occasion to talk about political things. But uh, very briefly, uh, there was one group with which uh, the government was uh, having discussion or uh, it was uh, talking with this group. But uh, the interlocutor uh, found that uh, there are other groups, other tribes and other people. Right, uh, this diverse Naga society cannot be represented by just one group. So this is one of the main reasons. But as I told you, as the president has also, also expressed that in near future, everything will be sorted out. With this, dear friends, uh, let's go through some uh, unique things of Nagaland. Uh, it is famous for organic farm produce, particularly flowers and fruits. Uh, it is rich with rare medicinal plants and herbs. And you know, nowadays, most of the beauty products, right, uh, you find this thing written on it herbal uh, herbal medicine and herbal cream and herbal this and that etc etc and uh, if we go back in the history then we find that uh, herbal medicines where uh, you can say the uh, herbal medicines are associated with 
our culture and uh, it is not only India but we are also facing competition with Chinese herbal or Chinese ancient medicines and the way yoga has uh, you know nowadays uh, that there is a trend of yoga as well as uh, Ayurveda as well so this is a perfect you can say environment and uh, this will bring huge amount of opportunity for the people of Nagaland and for the tribal people because they are the ones who are uh, you can say quite familiar about uh, different uh, plants and their medicinal value so if we can club them if we can uh, create a value chain or a supply chain in which everyone uh, can contribute then this will not only have a positive impact on the overall health of our society but on the economical side as well everyone will have a sort of win-win situation with this he has also mentioned the president has mentioned about uh, Naga Jolokia, which is uh, known as King Chili locally, and it is one of the hottest, one of the hottest chili papers of the world, and uh, uh, we use them in this uh, hot uh, sauce bottles as well uh, that are sold around the world. So in this way, Naga Land is contributing to the world as well, and uh, we know very well, as I told you about the advertisement that we find in DD News and others, and nowadays you can, you might have seen pictures of this. Uh, northeastern part of our country unfortunately i have never been here or else i would have uh, shared my experience with you guys but if anyone of you are from this part or uh, if you have been here then do share uh, some unique things that you have observed over there with this dear friends uh, we know from the pictures and from movies and things we know that uh, it is packed with uh, outstanding natural beauty isn't it and uh, this uh, heritage and culture and all these things are a sort of unique proposition for this northeastern part of our country and uh, once uh, this part will have airports or you can say connectivity and basic infrastructure like electric electricity and other things uh, then uh, it has a potential to become one of the most attractive tourist destination in the world with this dear friends uh, you can also understand that without the development of northeast and nagaland the development of india is also not possible with this this is the most important item that we have today and it is pertaining to this national nutrition mission as you can understand i'm sure you know many things about uh, nutrition so i'm not going into that area but a unique thing or you can say one thing that uh, generally is not discussed that much but it is there and it is called uh, nutrition inequality you know that how uh, differential treatment is being provided to boy and a girl and which is of course uh, not right right uh, a girl child has all the rights uh, to have access to nutrition and this is a thing that this is a point uh, that you can use for uh, arguing or uh, adding some more weight to your answer whenever you are asked with this sort of question and i think uh, you will find this sort of question as a descriptive question as well as mcq this is a very important topic here the other thing is uh, as you can see from the picture and it is very easy to understand as well that uh, the groups or, or, or the the different uh, you can say segment of people that are going to be targeted by this uh, nutrition mission is of course uh, children and then you have pregnant uh, ladies as well as lactating mothers uh, for obvious reason uh, the other thing is uh, dear friends that uh, this nnm is going to be an apex body right it is going to be a top body and uh, it is going to monitor supervise fix targets and as well as provide guidance uh, in terms of this nutrition and things like that and of course the main target is to eliminate stunting and undernutrition or malnourishment and low birth weight and other things uh, the unique thing or the synergy that this will create uh, is that or the most positive point of this uh, nnm is that dear friends we have different uh, ministries uh, working on different missions let me give you an example of Indra Dhanush mission that is working, that is falling under this uh, health ministry. And then you have uh, Matrutva Vandana uh, Yojana that falls under uh, Women and Child Development Ministry. So what happens is that uh, everyone is not working as a team. So this NNM will club all these different schemes under one umbrella. So you can understand that uh, we can have a more better focus on target and more results can be achieved. And uh, here... Uh, Menka Gandhi has also talked about this real-time monitoring system known as ICDSCAS, right? So that's uh, basically everything about it. In future, I'm sure we are going to get editorials and articles on this thing. At that point of time, I will discuss about this thing in detail and hopefully in near future, I will uh, take it as a 
a uh, focus topic too for all of you guys with this dear friends uh, bimstech is a news uh, bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economic cooperation here are the seven countries right you have india you have sri lanka then you have bangladesh you have two landlocked countries here uh, the fourth one is nepal the fifth one is bhutan these two are landlocked countries as you know and then you have two asean countries uh, the sixth one is your myanmar and the seventh one is this thailand and it is pertaining to this bay of bengal region now what this uh, news item is all about it is about coastal shipping and this agreement is being drafted by ministry of shipping government of india now what we are the objective here is of course to ensure that import and export between these countries is enhanced or increased this is a very common thing to understand now what uh, are the technical things regarding this agreement why we need this coastal shipping agreement the thing is uh, dear friends uh, under this coastal shipping agreements we, we are going to use smaller boats and smaller boats uh, require uh, uh, less fuel right uh, less cost is associated with it you can understand the rent and everything would be down of a small boat and uh, you will change this uh, shipping you can say agreement thing uh, under which uh, 20 nautical miles uh, within this 20 nautical miles you can roam around all this uh, uh, bimstack countries will be able to use their ships in this 20 nautical mile area so it will create a sort of uh, better connectivity between these countries and of course import and export will go up and it will be beneficial for all the countries uh, very simple to understand this thing uh, by the way one nautical mile means is equal to now uh, 1.8 kilometer keep this thing in mind uh, the normal <coughs> beg your pardon the normal mile is 1.6 but the nautical one is 1.8 now uh, let's uh, see our focus topic and the focus topic as you can see from your screen or the picture as well that uh, a mechanical human being or you can say a robot right uh, is taking away jobs from human beings uh, right this is a big uh, topic and uh, important one as well and uh, today's discussion is based on this mckinsey global institutes report artificial intelligence the next digital frontier uh, dear friends uh, we know that uh, job losses are going to happen with the introduction of this robots and uh, it is said as per the M mgi that is mckinsey global institute 100 million jobs will be snatched away by robots in india and 800 million worldwide and uh, in all sectors we will see 30 to 40 percent jobs will be taken away by the introduction of artificial intelligence and robots but uh, it also expresses financial express uh, has talked about this thing that uh, benefits may outweigh costs how we are going to see that see if we go back in the past and the mgi has done it for us uh, if we go through this report then we find that uh, introduction of computer destroyed 3.5 million jobs in usa but it also created 19.3 million jobs between 1972 2015 same story is applicable to the cars as well from horse carts uh, when we uh, switched over ourselves to this uh, motor cars uh, it destroyed 0.6 million jobs in usa All right uh, but uh, it also created uh, some good opportunities for other people i will sh uh, we will discuss about this thing in detail in next slide but let's uh, see what we have got here then mgi has gone back in the history and uh, it has analyzed uh, the impact of introduction of technology uh, since uh, first industrial revolution and it says that in many respect uh, the impact of automation on employment today is not likely to be different than in the past that means uh, the things that we have seen or observed uh, in in terms of automation and job losses uh, are going to be the same and uh, as we have talked about here that uh, in all over the world uh, we can lose 800 million jobs right uh, you roughly speaking you can say that 1 billion jobs and between uh, now that is 2017 and 2030 if uh, the way things are going on it will uh, we would be we will lose 400 million jobs and if automation becomes a sort of rapid thing then 800 million jobs will be lost but as i told you it will provide some opportunities for us as well and uh, see in uh, regarding cars 7.5 million new jobs were created now you would be thinking how 7.5 million new jobs are created imagine i will give you some points and then you can uh, carry it from there um say uh, first of all uh, repairing right car services and repairing and selling 
these are the things the other thing is uh, one out of the box example regarding entertainment or you can say this uh, race cars right so so much research and things are done and uh, this sort of events create jobs for many other people as well in different parts of the world so in this way it created more jobs uh, then you have uh, other people producing uh, other accessories for cars and things like that as well and uh, this MGI report also talks that uh, new opportunities will also be created by the introduction of this AI and robots and uh, it will create somewhere around 390 to 590 million jobs in normal course and of course we know that when we add more automation and AI uh, the productivity is going to go up if the productivity goes up then naturally the prices of the things will fall down and because uh, things will be done much easier in much more easier way much more uh, you can say the quality of the product will be nice and things like that so uh, the prices will fall down and uh, this can kick demand and this can create new jobs and if right uh, if investment is done in infrastructure then we can create huge amount of jobs because we, you know that infrastructure even today right and in the future as well it is one of the biggest employer when it comes to uh, recruiting people so uh, things are not that bad but we have to ensure that all those people who are losing jobs because of uh, the introduction of AI and robots uh, they have to retool themselves right and they have to find new jobs they have to re-engineer themselves they have to learn new skills and things like that and the work environment can provide this sort of things uh, educating people and adding more skills and uh, in future from now and in future as well uh, the owners will be on education institutions uh, right may it be online institution like uh, study iq or may it be the brick uh, institutions right uh, the normal colleges and uh, universities and school fr starting from very initial period to all the way to uh, postgraduate level or phd level uh, the the whole system should be uh, inculcating skill and education the real education the proper one right not just the degree I, degree is not going to help us out uh, we need to learn some practical skills as well and without these things uh, we are not going to survive uh, if we don't do it then it is going to be a tough future for all of us and uh, all these things uh, can be done of course only when we have political will so this is uh, going to be very challenging for the politicians and they should work start working on it asap as soon as possible with this uh, dear friends these are the answer answer is jainism and uh, uh, muhammad adil shah and uh, today's question is a descriptive one discuss the impact of three things on media these are the three things uh, you can see uh, corporatization then you have editors versus marketing people and social media these three things uh, have or uh, they are changing media and uh, then discuss the impact of media and how this change will change media with this dear friends uh, don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel i will share this uh, uh, lecture slide this pdf file uh, straight away for all of you on my facebook page my facebook page is prashant t mavani right uh, so make sure you check it out and give us a like so that uh, all the notification are being given to you and uh, i hope that you will too share this file and this video and uh, the things that we discuss here with other people as well with this dear friends i end this discussion i will see you all soon till then enjoy your studies take care goodbye for now